Hello! Today I want to do my June wrap up of the six books that I read last month. Uh, so here we go. The very first book I read was uh, the first book I read for the new book club I joined. I've joined an English book club and we read Diaspora by Greg Egan, which I did a little book review on, um, which I can link below. Um, just as a short teaser, I, don't, I won't go into detail too much. I gave it two out of five stars in Goodreads, um, which does not mean that I didn't find it interesting. Diaspora is a science fiction novel um, set in a post-human world, so you question a lot about identity and um, genetics and research, and those are sort of the big themes. Um, I just found it a bit difficult to get through, to be honest. I didn't find it exciting enough to warrant more stars. Um, but maybe if you are more into science fiction than I am, this will be more for you. The next book I read, I actually have here, and that is After You by Jojo Moyes. Um, sort of quite a big book that I was happy to get from my mum's because I wasn't actually planning on buying it. I read Me Before You, which is the other way around. This is the sequel to Me Before You by Jojo Moyes, which was quite a success. In the first book you meet Louisa Clark, who doesn't really know where she's going with her life, and she becomes a care worker for a young man called Bill Trano, who um, relies on everyone around him and his family to help him, because after an accident he's left in a wheelchair. Uh, and it's all about their relationship. And this is now the sequel, which I think Jojo Morris wasn't actually planning on writing from the get-go. I think just after the major success of Me Before You, she decided to follow the main character, Louisa Clark, a little more. After the events of the first book unfold, I can't really say too much, otherwise I'll spoil a whole book for you if you haven't read the first one yet. It's making the rounds a little on YouTube again, even though um, the first book obviously was published a few years back because it's coming into the movies. So maybe if you're interested in reading up on it before watching the movie, you can. This one I thought wasn't as strong as the first one. After You is a bit more frilly and light. Some of the characters and some of the events that unfold I actually thought were a bit random. Uh, so I've read better ones. I've even... If you want something a bit more light from Jojo Moyers, which isn't me before you, I suggest reading One Plus One or The One Plus One. Um, uh, that's also quite, well, serious themes but lighter tone on the whole. Um, and I actually like that even more than me before you. That was just characters. Um, they just resonated more with me. I gave that one three out of five, I believe, on Goodreads. Not sure now. Then the third book I read in June was a book that my boyfriend made me read. We did a, we also did a video together. We're challenging each other to each read five books. So I'm not sure now if it's four or five. Any, anyway, I'm, I'm ahead. I've actually read a book that he suggested and he has yet to read a single one. Um, the book that I'm talking about is Injustice. Uh, it has a bit of a lengthy uh, subtitle. Um, uh, it's called Injustice, Life and Death in the Courtrooms of America and it's by Clive Stafford Smith. This is about the author's attempts to defend Chris Maharaj in front of court. Chris Maharaj in the 80s is uh, sentenced to death for two murders and the author of the book, who is a lawyer, is convinced of his innocence basically and he unravels the case and highlights the role that all the different institutions in a way or, or, or people involved um, are responsible for this, in his opinion, unjust uh, ruling. It was a very interesting book to read. A lot of the ideas that he um, brings up centred about issues that I was familiar with already, so it wasn't mind-blowing to me. He has a very, very large note section in the book. The note section alone is something like 100 pages, which 
sometimes interrupted the flow of the reading because I was constantly reading the footnotes and tracing the steps back. Good read about the American and British uh, court system, if you're interested. The fourth book I read on my Kindle, which is a bit of a cliche because uh, people tend to read romance novels on their Kindle more often, um, and I stumbled upon the suggestion via the Book Riot podcast, Get Booked. I was intrigued, it's not a genre I read a lot of, the book I'm talking about is Asking For It by Lila Pace, um, which I gave 3 out of 5 stars in Goodreads. The book is about the main character, Vivian, I believe she's called, and she fantasises about being raped. That's sort of the only thing that really floats her boat. Um, and she meets this guy who overhears her talking about that in hushed tones, and he basically suggests that he can make her fantasies come true. And it's about their relationship, and it's quite steamy and explicit, although I thought the sex scenes weren't actually that... I mean, even though they're very sec very um, explicit about the sex, I found it difficult to sort of see it in a very erotic light because the topic is rape, so that in itself is quite taboo. Maybe it's interesting actually to read it just for the shock factor, I know that that did intrigue me. A thing I really liked about it was that the main character, Vivian, isn't this ditzy, helpless virgin. She's just a strong woman who also sees a therapist and is trying to get a hold on uh, her issues that she's having in relationships because of her sexual fantasies. Um, I did, however, find it a bit disappointing that all the characters have a sort of history that explains psychologically what's wrong with them. And I thought that was a bit of a shame because I thought, well, why does there have to be something wrong with them? Why can't it just be a sort of fetish or kink without it meaning that their minds are totally derailed? But on the whole, maybe that's an interesting one for a bit more of a dark romance novel. I did fly through it. It did, even though I would like to be all elitist about it and tilt my head up at a romance novel, it did really keep me reading. So that in itself, I think, is a sign of quite an enticing book. Um, yeah. The fifth book that I read was also for the book club. We read The Vegetarian uh, by Han Kang, Han Kang, I've heard it pronounced in numerous ways now and I I have to um, admit that I haven't researched how to pronounce that Korean name. It's been translated into English uh, and has recently won the International Man Booker Prize. So we were intrigued to read it because of all the hype. Um, it follows the main character who, after having a dream, so she says, turns vegetarian and it highlights the social and cultural context in her family and in Korea on the whole and how being a vegetarian is something that is quite strongly criticised. Um, the book is told from three perspectives in three chapters. It's told from her husband's voice, her brother-in-law's voice and her sister's voice. And linguistically we discussed in our book club the differences between the chapters and that in itself is very interesting. Although I must admit, I feel like I'm biased by the hype. I really thought I would love it. The topic is interesting to me. Um, I'm a vegetarian myself, so just because everyone is a little bit egocentric, I thought that would be amazing. And I actually thought the title is misleading. It is beautifully written though, and it's only 188 pages. So by all means, give it a go. I definitely don't think it will be a waste of your time. And then the sixth and last book that I read in June is a short one. Again, it's a play, and they are usually short. This cover might be a bit off-putting, it's reflecting a lot, it's called Cuddles, and the play is written by Joseph Wilde. Uh, it was first brought to stage in 2013, and I read it because, as a hobby, <laughs> I enjoy acting, and for the first time I am trying myself out a bit on directing, so with two good friends of mine. We are playing around with this. It's a two-female play, which in itself is great because it's rare and women are underrepresented in theatre plays. 
uh, Cuddles is about Eve, a 13 year old, maybe vampire, maybe not vampire. And she lives with her sister Tabby, who is taking care of her. And it is about their relationship and how that changes when Tabby wants to change their two person dynamic. Um, the way the play is structured is really fun and it gives you loads of opportunity to play around with it when you're actually trying to put it on stage because there are scenes running in parallel um, so that's just really fun for the actresses trying themselves out with the text. It's a great one, I gave it 5 out of 5, I'm biased because uh, I'm diving into the text a little more than when I would just read it. I can really um, wholeheartedly recommend it. It's, I mean the cover does sort of show it's quite dark um, and if you're a bit squeamish then this might also not be great for you but it has some tough um, topics being discussed. People always talk about trigger warnings, this applies to this book but I think nothing is used in a sensationalist way, I think it all makes sense. And I read a romance novel about rape this month so apparently that is a bit of a theme. All of these six books I'm glad that I read, even though I liked some more than others. I'd really like to hear what you liked most this month. Maybe some of you have read any of these books and would like to give me your opinion on it. Um, that's always more fun than just living on your own with your opinion with no one to share it with. Um, I hope you have a wonderful July. I'm late with this wrap up so I'll better get a move on and I hope you have a great day. Bye bye!